continuing in Isaiah chapter 61, we're going to look at this topic of building old wastes and uh, restoring the former desolations, all right? Let me read this passage to you. It says, and they shall build up the old wastes, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair, <clears throat> excuse me, the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Now we're gonna look at several passages, the first of which is going to be Amos chapter nine at verse 13. Amos chapter nine at verse 13. Is this fulfilled? Well, you say, well, why are you taking us to the book of Amos to try and show its fulfillment? Well, hopefully I'll make that clear in a moment. Amos chapter nine, let's, uh, we'll go ahead and start it at verse 11. He says, in that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen and close up the breaches thereof. I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. So there we see the use of that term build that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name, says the Lord that does this. <clears throat> Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that sows seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, or new wine is actually what that means, and all the will, hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel, and they shall build the waste places. What did Isaiah chapter 61 say? It says they shall build the old wastes. They shall build the waste places and inhabit them, inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them in their land. There's that planting of the Lord again. And they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, says the Lord your God. Well, some people would say, well, this is not fulfilled. This couldn't be fulfilled. But let's take a look at what the Bible says and see if it is fulfilled. Let's look over at Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. This is the chapter where we see the Pharisees coming in with a terribly heretical doctrine that you have to have Christ plus circumcision in order to be saved. And so Peter had just gotten up and spoken and he said uh, over here in chapter 15, verse, uh, well, let's look at this, uh, verse seven. And there had been much disputing. Peter rose up and said to them, men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows their hearts, bore them witness, giving them the Holy Spirit, even as he did to us. And he put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. That's how God purifies people's hearts. He gives them faith, thus they are purified. Now, therefore, why do you tempt God to put a yoke about the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? And what did Galatians say? Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. He shall proclaim liberty to the captives, right? Why do you attempt to put the, why do you want to put a yoke around the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But he says here, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Well then, James gets up and says, Simeon has declared how God at first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. What did Amos say? He says here, they, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen which are called by my name. So James says, to take out of them a people for his name and to this agree the words of the prophets. In other words, he's saying that what Peter just said in what is being fulfilled through the Gentiles believing the gospel, James says, Peter, what Peter has said agrees with the words of the prophets. And watch what he quotes. As it is written, he begins to quote Amos 9. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David. What is he saying? Ephesians chapter two, we are built up a spiritual house, 1 Peter two. 
That is, Gentile and Jew build up this tabernacle. It's the tabernacle of David over which Christ rules, okay? I will return, build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen again, and I will build again the ruins thereof. There's the old waste places being built up, right? I will build the ruins. And I will set it up that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, says the Lord, who does all these things. Isn't that beautiful? So that we see the old waste being built up, Amos, which is said to be fulfilled, verse 11. I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. Isaiah 61, and they shall build the old wastes, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Well, then he says, and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Well, now who were typically referred to as strangers under the Old Testament? It was the Gentiles, okay? So he says, and strangers shall stand and shall feed your flocks. Well, what does Ephesians say? It says, now you are no more strangers, but you are fellow citizens of the household of God. Let me go ahead and read that to you so you can see the power of this. Ephesians chapter two. Ephesians chapter two. Paul says, he had reconciled both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. He came and preached peace to you who were far off, Gentiles, and to them that were near, Jews. For by him, or through him, we both, Jew and Gentile, have access. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We have access by one spirit to the Father. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you are also built together for a habitation of God through the spirit. It doesn't get any better than that, does it? 